Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now in this video I'm going to show you how to set up a VPN on a Raspberry Pi. Now there's some key reasons why you would want to set up a VPN on your Raspberry Pi. The main reason for me is that I like to connect to my uh, services that I run on my home network such as Nextcloud um, and a couple other services without having to expose them to the internet. So for example my Nextcloud rather than me actually exposing it so anyone can actually access the front end of my next cloud and you know um they won't be able to log in or anything because i don't have any credentials but it's the fact that it's still exposed to the internet i'm not a big fan of so what i do instead is i actually connect via a vpn which goes through one a raspberry pi once i'm connected to that then i can connect to my uh, local ip address of my next cloud on my phone even though i'm not you know at home or on the on the wireless at home uh, i could be anywhere in the world essentially so this is the script that I'm going to use. It's just called PyVPN. It's actually fantastic. All you got to do is copy this uh, installation script here. And then once you've installed that, you paste it into your VPN, ah, sorry, into your command line. And then it pretty much runs you through an installer. Uh, and that's what we'll be doing today. The other cool thing about this is if you're using a Pi hole, uh, like what I'm doing at the moment, this VPN installer will actually detect that and set it up as your DNS resolver. So that means that even while you're out on the road and you're connected to your vpn it will run the you know uh, ad blocking and everything for you as well so that's fantastic so um, if you are going to install this and you are running a pie hole on a raspberry pi install the vpn on the same device um it will work out you know those the pi vpn and the pie hole worked hand in hand they're fantastic services to have uh running so the obvious next steps are is to connect to your raspberry pi uh let me just make this a little bit bigger um, and we need to run that script so we'll just come here and we'll copy and paste this. Paste it into our terminal and we hit enter. This is gonna pull down the uh, the script and it will start running it for us. So now we just sit back and we'll wait for it to run through a couple of uh, pre checks. So it's going to run an update and then an upgrade on our Raspberry Pi to make sure it's all up to date. So you can see here, it's saying that our system is up to date. So now we'll continue with the Pi VPN installation. And now it's just doing um, a dependency check. It's making sure we had all the software and then you get a blinding pink screen, um, which will be our installer. So now it's just pulling down some packages that we might need. Well, which we will need. And now it's saying here, the installer will transform your Raspberry Pi into a open VPN or WireGuard server. Uh, for this uh, video, we'll be using WireGuard. It's a bit more modern and it's just got a bit more uh, better features, uh, which we'll cover in a bit. So at the screen, we'll just hit okay. And then it's saying that we're going to need a static IP address. Uh, like any server that you have in your house, um, make sure it's got a static IP address, which you can set um, on your router. Uh, so it's just set statically. Um, so just make sure you have that. I think if you're running Raspberry Pi OS, it will set during this installer, it will set a static IP address for you. I'm not, I'm using um, Ubuntu on my Raspberry Pi, so it won't do that. But I'll hit OK. And here it's saying, since I'm not using Raspbian, um, it won't configure a static IP for me. Uh, that's all good i've already done that so i'll hit okay now we'll choose a local user that will hold the o the vpn configurations i just hit okay i only have one user and that's called ubuntu so i think you'll only have the same as well so just uh it might be pi or something if you're running on the uh, raspberry pi os so just hit okay while we enter now it's just going to pull down some files from github uh which would be like the scripts and whatnot and now we can choose what we want to do. So here we can choose WireGuard or OpenVPN. Here you can see uh, some good things on why you'll choose WireGuard. Um, so as you can see here, high performance, better speed, um, better uh, cryptography, and it's got a better battery life if you're using them on mobile devices. So WireGuard seems like the way to go now. So we'll hit enter just because WireGuard is default uh, selected. And now it's just gonna do some pre-checks. I already have some already installed, so I don't need to install those. And this is now the port that we'll be exposing our VPN to on the internet because this is the only part we need to expose to the internet is so we can connect outside, um, connect to our router uh, via this port and then we'll be into our local network. But don't worry, that's the actual access to your VPN is all protected by a key um, and we can connect to it using a QR code uh, on the app, which I'll show you after this. Uh, note this port down um, because this is the port we need to uh, port forward on our router uh, you can change this but for the sake of this video i am going to leave it to as 51820 uh, the reason you might want to change it is because 
there's all those web scrapers on the internet who are looking for the support specifically to try and hack um so you can change it but generally if you connect to a via qr codes and stuff you're pretty safe um but yeah it's up to you but i'm going to leave it the same for the sake of this video i'll hit enter and as you can see here uh it's going saying are you happy with port 51820 and i am happy so we'll hit enter and now it's gone we've detected a pi hole installation do you want to use it as a dns server uh yes we do so we'll hit enter and now it's going to restart that dns server and now it's um, showing my public ip address and it's saying is this are you going to connect to your vpn using uh, an ip address or a dns name um, i'm not using a dns name i will be using an ip address and i'd say most of you watching this would be the same um you'll know if you're using dns or not um be in mind uh if you're like me you probably have a dynamic public ip address and this will change over time so just be aware of that if your vpn stops connecting you'll just have to go in and change your ip address uh well just to make sure that it picks up your new public ip address um and i'll hit enter for ok now it's just doing some checks and then now the server keys will be generated all good we'll hit enter cool now it's going to ask us about unintended upgrades so what this is is that since this is going to be exposed to the internet, we want to make sure that our Raspberry Pi is up to date always, right? Uh, so what this will do is actually just update itself uh, without us having to do it. Um, so this is something we want to enable. Um, so we'll hit enter for OK, and we will enable unattended upgrades and security patches. So enter, and now it's just going to install that. Cool, uh, installation is complete. So we'll hit enter, and we do want to reboot. So now that our Raspberry Pi is rebooting, this is the best time to actually do our port forwarding. So when we come back, our Raspberry Pi should be all started up again. Now, this is the tricky part because what you're seeing now uh, will probably be different to what you're using. Uh, so the, I've connected to my router just using the um, IP address uh, 192.168.1.1, which is like the generic uh, way for connecting to your router. And we've actually got to go into our router and look for an option called port mapping or port forwarding, uh, depending on what they use uh, in your router, at uh, the term they use. Um, and then this is where we say, I want to forward this specific port on this device on my network to the internet, right? So as you can see here, I, I run my website locally um, and I expose that port on that Raspberry Pi to the internet so you can connect to it. Anyway, so I need to port forward that 512, 51820 uh, port. So we'll hit plus. And I'll give my port forward uh, a name. I'll just call it VPN. Uh, the protocol it uses is UDP. This is very important. Make sure you select UDP. If you select TCP, your VPN will not work. So click UDP. And I, I've got the option to choose a device specifically, but I don't know what it's called on my network. So I'm just going to use the IP address, which is 192.168.1.4. And the port I need to expose is 51820. Again, 51820. And we hit save. And I'll come down and apply those changes. All right, so my changes have now been applied. So now we just wait for the VPN to come back up and we can start looking at configuring our phone to use the VPN. And I'll, I'll show you testing it as well. I'll show you how um, I try to connect to my uh, next cloud over the generic mobile network uh, without using my vpn show you it doesn't work turn with the vpn on and i'll show you that it does connect cool so now that we are connected to our vpn so uh sorry well our raspberry pi running our vpn uh, we've got some commands here now which is a like pi vpn um and the one that we want to do is pi vpn add so this will add a new um certificate for us to be able to connect to our vpn with a device um so what we're going to do is hit enter on that we we'll enter a name, so this will be for my uh, my phone. And I hit enter, and now it's created those keys. So now what you need to do is download the uh, WireGuard app on your phone. So as you can see here um, on my phone, we're looking at the moment. Um, I'm just on the Google Play Store and just look for this WireGuard here. Um, and once you've downloaded it, we want to open the WireGuard app. So it will just be like this on your um, home. Uh, on your phone and then just open up the WireGuard app and then what we want to do is hit the plus button right and we want to import from a QR code so what we need to do is actually generate that QR code and we can do that back at the terminal here so what we'll do is just go uh, you can see it here actually it tells us that we run this command here pi vpn hyphen QR pi vpn hyphen QR hit enter 
we want the QR code for our phone, please, and hit enter. And you'll get a big QR code here. So I need to scroll down a bit. There we go. That's my QR code. Don't worry, I will be removing this QR code as a certificate uh, by the time this video comes out. Uh, right, so what we need to do is come back onto our phone. Um, and then on the WireGuard app, we need to hit that plus button. Scan from QR code. Scan that QR code. There we go. Give it a name. So I just call this uh, home. If I can spell correctly. And we'll create that tunnel. And now we should be connected to our VPN. So let's test this. So first off, I'm going to turn my wireless off and just use the mobile network. So I've turned the uh, wireless off and I'm going to try connect to my next cloud. So we'll type in HTTP that 192.168.1.212 and we'll hit enter. So, and now this is not going to connect. It's just going to sit here trying to test the connection uh, because, you know, we're on the mobile network, but we're not connected via our VPN. So we can't hit any of our home networks. So this is just going to stay on testing connection for ages until it times out. So I'm just going to stop it. And now what we're going to do is go into WireGuard hit that VPN button, we'll turn that on, give it a couple of seconds to make those connections, we'll open up Nextcloud again, and now let's try that IP address again. We'll hit uh, enter, we're gonna test that connection, and there we go. It took a little while, the VPN was probably still setting up, and now we are connected. Um, so that's how easy it is to set up your VPN. Uh, just to show you that it really does work, I'll even hit my Pi hole as well, one second. So we're just loading up uh, the Pi hole now, and I'm not on my home, well, I'm not on my home wireless, um, we'll just wait for it to load and there we go. You can see that I have hit my uh, pie hole uh, We can hit the admin menu as well one sec. It's quite slow because I'm in a dead spot uh, in my home for my uh, mobile network So it is a bit slow, but there you can see I am on my pie hole, but I'm not connected on my home network I'm using the VPN. Uh, so that's how easy it is to connect to uh, Your home network uh, with a VPN running on a Raspberry Pi So I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye